Hey guys, Run Unchained. So right now, me and Junus are gonna go watch Silence. We just got invited to, uh, and I said prep, an advanced screening of Silence, and go see it and have a review afterwards. I'm stoked about it just because it's Martin Scorsese coming back as director, and has Andrew Garfield, uh, Adam Driver, and Liam Neeson in it. And from what I've seen of the trailer, and, and I did a trailer reaction for it, Looks fucking intense. You stoked about it? Yeah, I've never, honestly, I've never seen a movie where Liam Neeson hasn't been good. So, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. So, right now, we're going to go head out, check in, and we'll see you guys after the movie. Okay, so we just got out of silence, and, uh... Wow, this movie's heavy. Can you agree with that, Junus? That I can agree with. <laughs> and just to 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 let, uh, let it be said, this this is gonna be a spoilers review. So if you haven't seen the film, pause this, save it, add it to your favorites, go watch the film, and then come back and watch this. And I have seen I had seen this film previously, guys and girls. I had seen this film because it was released uh, only in a few theaters. In Christmas time, on the 25th of December of last year, it was released in a couple cities. I was on L I was in LA in for Christmas, and it was showing there in like in a couple of theaters. So immediately I went to go see it. And the one thing I gotta say before I start talking the story in the movie basis is that when you go see this film, go open minded. Yes. Go open minded. No matter what your belief, because this movie involves um, beliefs. No matter what you, well, no matter what you believe, no matter no matter what you think of different um, uh, races, be open-minded. Visually, this movie was a piece of art. It was that, yes. And what brought it, brought it even more, more like made it more an organic feel was the performances of the actors. And I mean, I'm not gonna just say Garfield, Driver, and Liam, and Liam Neeson. No, the performance of the Japanese actors, those who were for Christianity, and those who who despised it. Yes. Say say what you think of, of of how they portray Japanese there. The way those actors perform. Wow. The Inquisitor. Oh my gosh. It you was. You have to be such, You have to be a really good actor for someone hate you in real life for someone to say you know what fuck the inquisitor <laughs> he played his role really good because i'm pretty sure he's not like that in real life no he, he's gonna be a real nice old man i didn't i did not like the inquisitor but i was like god uh, oh no i'm not gonna say that but, but good lord his performance was stellar it was Junior, what did you think of it well to be honest i thought it was a very visually impacting film uh -huh. whether you are for Christianity against Christianity whether your religion is Hinduism Buddhism, uh, Buddhism or uh, watermelonism whatever you are <laughs> come on <laughs> watermelon you you've got to admit that seeing the actors portray that much suffering, that much pain, seeing the actors and actresses show emotion like that. Someone put in hard work. I'm right. looking at people, people say that this wasn't a well done film and a well uh, performed film. I completely disagree. Say what you want, the story, the theme, then somebody worked their asses off to make this film. Right, right. And there are going to be many people that are going to say, oh, this is like Passion of the Christ. Yes and no. Um, you could, some could argue that it is very similar to Passion of the Christ. Yeah, yeah. Storyline, the suffering, the, the amount of suffering, the, um, the causes for death. But then again, at the same time, it wasn't because this wasn't just about like, you know, who believes in Christianity? Me! Who believes? Okay, we're gonna fight. It wasn't this. It was it was about how people that believe in Christianity live in a place where they despised it. How do they live? How do they, how did two foreigners come 
to place and cause no trouble or cause trouble. Right. How does how does the environment that 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 ban, that bans Christianity? How can uh, how can it coexist with with a few with few people or, or a lot of people that do believe in Christianity? Think of it this way: it was a journey instead yes. of a statement. Did at any point that the film lagged to you that it took too long? Because for the, this is almost a three-hour movie, dude. It was a pretty long movie. It's yes. like Wolf of yeah. Wall Street. And um, for me, I'm used to seeing long films, short films. Uh-huh. So for me, it, it takes it takes a really, really, really bad film to to like make it obvious to me, like oh, I'm not gonna the pacing is killing me, or a film that I'm very excited and just breaks my heart. I it's, I can easily tell, but for this one that. That I knew coming into it that it's gonna hit topics that people are gonna be maybe not too comfortable with seeing or talking about. Correct. Yes. But it is a topic. It is something to to have a conversation. Well, let me just say this. Okay. Honestly, I didn't notice that it was three hours long <laughs> because I was into the movie. Now I can't say that I was extremely entertained because I honestly was that. You know, Liam Neeson, Andrew Garfield. I was expecting an action film or a horror <laughs> film. I was expecting something else. Yeah. But I was visually there, visually and mentally there. You were impressed. I was impressed. And for 28 years, you can't have a one and a half hour movie. You now three three hours is more than enough time. It's, it's it's a good amount of time to show all of their hard work. Um, performances by. The Japanese actors, who I, 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 I feel bad for not knowing them, really, but I will. Japanese actors, Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, and Liam Neeson. Chemistry and performances, what would you grade it out of? In my opinion, out of they 10. were spectacular. Um, to be honest, I'm not, I, I don't speak their language, so I, I really don't know what they were saying. If, you know, not for the subtitles, but... I, I think they were phenomenal. I would give them a, maybe eight and a half or a nine. Okay. Story. Which thought? Like it? The story was good. The story was good. Okay. Um, it had effort. It had in, good intentions. It did lag for a minute. For you? Yeah. For me, in my opinion. But it was. It was good. It had a good storyline. Um, Good intentions. Okay. I would give it maybe a seven. Okay. And um, the visuals, the direct, the direction, how it was set up. The visuals were great. Lighting was great. Um, the name of the film is Silence. Mm-hmm. And when you watch it, whether you want to or not, you're gonna note that silence. You know what it means. You're gonna know exactly what it means. Yeah. I would give this film overall for overall. I would give it an eight. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Well, that's gonna be it for for Junis guys. Sorry, I couldn't show his face. I'm gonna I'm working on getting like a, a night vision <laughs> thing to like so you're able to see him. Hey, but you know what I said. That's yeah, what yeah, yeah. And uh, right now, head back to my place, and uh, I'll give I'll get a little bit more depth of what I thought about it. So, All right, say guys. goodbye. Have a good one. Now you've heard Jonas's perspective and uh, thoughts of the film, here's mine. Positive eyes for this film are not as much, and I love Mark Scorsese. I think as, as a director, he he can't miss. He can't miss. <laughs> but in this one, and there's no nothing wrong with this, that people, besides the director and the producer, uh, stole a show. Both in front of the camera and behind the camera. Speaking behind the camera, the cinematographer, Rodrigo Prieto. I mean, this film, when there were shots of the ocean, when there were shots of the mountains, there were shots even of people dying or being tortured that were just impactful. And you, I didn't want to watch it. I didn't want to watch people getting tortured, but... At the same time, it is a film, and the way it was, uh, I mean, it made me feel so bad watching it, and this is how good it was, that I felt like I wanted to just jump in and, and take, you know, help those people out that were getting tortured that you could see in the trailer. 
of being crucified underwater, or uh, even in the beginning, and this is spoilers, in the beginning it starts off with um, Leonis's uh, character writing in a letter, in, in, in narration, that, um, that the people he's taught about Christianity, that he got like six, five people into these flogged mountains that they call hells, and they just crucified him, and they throw hot water at him, and they burn him, and they're it was oh, it was impactful. Now to editing. Thelma Shoemaker. If you follow Mark Scorsese's track record, you know that someone is the backbone and the the pulse, the blood running through the film, through each of most of most of Mark Scorsese's films, and that's because Thelma Shoemaker has been editing most of his uh, masterpieces. She goes back to. Raging Bull, and I give kudos to to uh, Thomas Shoemaker as well. Now the look, in terms of the production, and that goes back to Dante Ferretti, the production designer. Another collaborative uh, re uh, re collaboration with Mark Scorsese. This guy he did Casino, Games of New York, The Aviator, and Shutter Island. And if you look at those films, those films look as a period piece of that time where those films take place. Whether it's in Shut Island that's most of a mostly the, the McCarthyism era, the fifties, sixties type. Shut Island looks like fifties and sixties. When you see DiCaprio, Mark Ruffalo characters, they look like detectives from that era. And I remember looking at it and I'm like the clothing, the 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 designs of, of Japan, the the, the buildings even how the villages were made, it was, oh, I'm like, damn, like, I mean, Mark Scorsese, I think, maybe, I, I could, it's debatable whether anyone has a, a best collaborative crew behind them, in terms of the director. Scorsese, with the editor, the production designer, and even though it's a brief time, the cinematographer, it, it just, it just says that, that, when a director has an amazing crew behind them, it, it it pays off. When you see the film, whether you understand the story or you don't like it or you like it, people put in 120% into it, and I give kudos to them. So that's the crew. Now I'm gonna acknowledge the four, three, four stars of the, of the film, which is Andrew Garfield playing Father Rodriguez, Adam Driver playing Father. Excuse me, Father Garupe, Liam Neeson playing Father Ferreira, and also Siron <laughs> Hintz, who's, uh, I, I forgot the character, let's see, Father Valignano, who's going to be Stephen Wolf and <laughs> Justice League. For what the time they had, perfect, out of, the ball, out of the ballpark. To me, the people who stole the show were the Japanese actors. And I'm gonna try my best to pronounce the name and if the actors are watching this or if anyone appreciates the actors, I'm doing my best with what I can say in terms of the Japanese names. Shinya Sukam Sukumoto as Mokichi. Yoshi Oida as Ichizo. Yuzuke Kobozuka as Kishiro. Aisai Ogato as Enio Chigonokami or the Inquisitor. And Talanubu Asano as the interpreter. These I mean wow I and don't get me wrong. This I mean the, the main character of this film is Father Rodriguez, Andrew Garfield. Who I think should also be nominated as, as best actor. I don't know for whether this film or Hack Hacksaw Ridge I haven't seen and I'm gonna do my best to watch it. But I think that Wow, the way he was expressing himself, it, it it was amazing. But the reason why the characters moved on, had trouble, had hope, had a, a, a balanced, was it because of the people around them. Mokichi, who was played by Shinya Tsukamoto, is sort of the one of the two, one of the three uh, Japanese uh, Christians, Japanese Christians who are for Christianity. And um, 
at the at the middle at, at the sort of the, the middle of the film and this is spoilers the empire the imperialistic uh, government of Japan who, who banned on Christianity and think it's excuse my language pile of shit and uh, they, they they go to this village where the the first uh, the fathers first encountered Christian Japanese born Christians you know, Mokichi is one of the, the few that they're like, we will die for Christianity. You know, we you know we don't care when I, and even the government threatens them that if you don't tell us who, if you they don't if they don't snitch out who's Christian, we're taking four hostages, four hostages. And they tell Mokichi, you're one of them. You're gonna go. So you have three days to tell us who's Christian or not. If not, you're going up, you're going up to Nagasaki, which was they referenced that a lot. Nagasaki, if you if you go to Nagasaki, you're basically going to die. And um, unfortunately, no one snitches out who's Christian. The government comes back to get uh, the four uh, four hostages, and Ichizo and Mukichi and Kishiro are, are taken. But Mukichi was, to me at least, the one who you felt bad, and you even hear you even hear um, um, Father Rodriguez's narration like, "These are the most loyal." human beings to Christianity, but why should they suffer so much? And there's a moment when it's raining and Mokichi and Father Rodriguez are saying goodbye to each other. And Mokichi hand, um, hands Rodriguez, Andrew Garfield, a uh, handmade uh, uh, cross, cross, cross symbol. And he tells him, this is, I, made him, I made this with all my, um, with everything I had. And it was sort of my symbol to Christianity, what I believed in, my link to it. I give it to you because you brought me hope. And you hear him perform that, and it's like you know he's gonna die, and it sucks. And I and a remarkable and amazing thing that Father Rodriguez tells him is that your courage gives me strength, and that uh, I only wish I had the same to give back to you. Then comes Kishiro, played uh, by Yusuke Kubuzaka. Again, I'm I'm pronouncing these names wrong. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. This guy. I, 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 like I said, I saw this movie twice now. This guy was sort of, he was sort of like, uh, this guy, like, you know, there was, I know, like, I, I know in Mean Streets, Scorsese did this, that the gang, the gangsters, the guys who be up in, in, in gang, um, gang work, they would go to, uh, mass or church every week just to ask for forgiveness. So they could be clear out of the whole week they did of, of, of sinning, and then they would go back to sinning again. This guy, Kishiro, was the same thing. When you first meet him, he's drunk. I don't believe in Christian anymore. That, you know, that uh, I'm from Japan, that I want to go to Japan. Kishiro's like, every week he's going to Father Rodriguez. Forgive me? You know, I, 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 excuse my language. I fucked up again, fucked up again. Can you forgive me? You know, I need to confess. And at first, you feel sympathy, like, damn, this guy went through. And he's always the one who's who's ready to give up on Christianity. Well, I remember the first time being like, this is ridiculous. How can this guy, and Rodriguez one tells him, like, you know, he doesn't, he never denies him of, of like, giving his compassion, hearing and forgiving him. But I remember at, towards the end of the film, Rodriguez like, oh, no, not again. And he's locked up, and she was like, like, Father, forgive me. I sinned again. I won't do it again. And Rodriguez, instead of being like, Fuck off, excuse me. He's like, there you go, 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 you know, okay. We did it again, you're, you're good. <laughs> and it was, and he's a test to Rodriguez's faith. He's the one who, who, who even though it might seem ridiculous every week, he's asking for, for uh, confession. But the way I interpret it is that every week, Rodriguez was tested not with just by nature and how to survive and how to be quiet in Japan But just like do you still Keep the faith? Are you still willing to forgive this man for what he's done even though it's horrendous? Are you still able to forgive him? And I think that was an amazing um, um, Tool that that Mark Scorsese used then the flip side of the Japanese where there was the, the ones that who praised and were for Christianity and believed in it there were those who Thought of it not as a disease, but just a dangerous, a dangerous thing for all J Japan, was Inu Chugo Chugo no, no Kami, who was also known as the Inquisitor, played by Issei Ogata. Ogata. This guy was the damn. 
he would laugh at the peasant, uh, at the villagers, and he would, uh, he just like, oh, no, 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 call me, you know, he like, he, he like, he, he knew he ruled everyone, and he wanted to make an example of it, and just, he was a perfect rival to Rodriguez, and he, uh, because he ordered everything, so all the deaths, all the torture, he managed it. And what I wanted to hear about, like, different points of views of why this shouldn't be here, why is this banned, why is it this, why is, you know, as Rodriguez puts out, that it's po that the roots of Japan are poisoned, that you guys are doing it wrong, that this is the way to do it. It was a good a yin-yang to each other, Rodriguez and the Inquisitor. It was, a, it was, it was... I remember feeling, damn, that guy's such a, uh, for for what I for what I thought of, not because of religion or that, just because of what he carried out, in terms of torture and killing. God, he was such a bad guy, but the actor is selling it to me the same way that Javier Bardem sold it to me as uh, Mr. Silva in Skyfall, the way Heath Ledger sold it to me, and then. And the Dark Knight as the Joker, this guy sold it to me as the I don't want to say I don't want to say villain, but just the the reverse side, the reverse side of Rodriguez. And um, same thing goes well to Tanu Talanubo Osano, who was the interpreter. Who at the end we meet him up, and he's the one telling the uh, Rodriguez that that Padre that we have a belief here about Buddhism and all that, and um, because Rodrigo doesn't know well the, the the language, he's always there interpreting. And I remember at one point he tells them while they're torturing or killing um, Japanese people who believe in Christianity, that look at this, that that you know, look what Christi Christianity has done here, but has done nothing but death and um, and danger. That if you were a real priest, you would have stopped their their death and all that. And that's gonna be most most well. The last thing is gonna be the story of and the writing of this film. I think what I knew watching the trailers is that I had to get the the religion aspect about it, not 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 fully, but just a part of it. Instead of just being like, this is how it's gotta it's gotta be this way, it's gotta be this way, it's gotta be this way. That I from seeing the trailer, I knew that it was gonna be a. Uh, we were gonna investigate the character of Rodriguez. It's not like, and I, 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 I'm, I'm, you could, you know, call me on this. That I, it's not like other films of Christianity or, or just religion that just snapping it, boom. That's how you do it. That's the religion you gotta do. That's the religion you gotta be. It wasn't this. It was. It was a character's journey, and we follow his journey. We saw him go through multiple tests, and you felt bad for what he had to see, what he had to experience, and. What he had to not to do. There was a lot of times that he he couldn't do nothing. That that it was just people. The Japanese Christian were like, "Don't do nothing. We we're willing to to die for this for this belief. Just don't." And I I I think that for me my interpretation, I think it was a, an amazing film, and it was like sort of a relief of not. Noticing or seeing films that are being made, it's just a stamp, boom, religion one, which I, I, I have no problem, but I prefer not to watch. I have no problem that there's films about being, you know, you got making Christianity a cool thing. I have no problems with that. It's just that not my type of thing to go see, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was a journey of someone who believed in something and how they turn out at the end. Now that leads to some gripes of the film. And you could say, and this is just, just a little bit of gripes. Some of the negatives, negatives could be that, that the end of the film might have dragged a little bit. There was a big narration and just events happening, happening, happening. And for me, seeing the first time, I'm like, cool. But the end, it kind of dragged a little bit. When I saw it, when I saw it the second time right here with Junis, I understood why it was dragged away just to explore how Rodriguez's story ended. And uh, some people, might, that's the, my, my thing that might pull people from it, is that, oh, it's almost three hours long. Like, is it that necessary? You know. It, it's, it's something that, that not, not a lot of people could, could take in. So that's, that's a little gripe. Also, I don't think we, had, we got enough 
from Father Ferreira, played by Liam Neeson, and Father Garupe, played by Adam Driver. This story isn't about him. It's about Rodriguez's um, journey. But I think to see connectivity between Father Rodriguez and Father Garupe as two young priests that they grew up together, taught by, you know, taught by uh, Father Ferreira, I think it would have been cool to see more chemistry a little bit between them. But I know this is more a, of a Rodriguez's story. Rodriguez is a journey. I understand that, but it, it would have been nice to see a little bit more of Liam Neeson and Adam Driver development. And then also, it goes back to, to people viewing this film. I think it's can, it can be a controversial film. And uh, I I can see people, and particularly people maybe, maybe of Japanese, that, that uh, some comments were like, ooh, like, that was kind of a heavy comment, even though this is a heavy film. And maybe the depictions of Japanese, because I know that people, I, I, I've heard that people um, think it's kind of like a wheel spinning over again of like, you know, these Christians, these white men bringing hope to this foreign country. Like, they've seen it multiple times throughout the years. And, um... It's sort of the thing that, that might bring it down, that people might not get over their points of view or, or their perspective on stuff, life, religion, whatever, and won't see the film for being a, a, a study of a character and more of a character's belief, character's faith and all that. But for me, I, I, I got out of the way because I'm not going to say, I'm not, I'm not gonna say my, my belief, but... I got that out of the way and just being like, okay, this guy, he believes in something. Let's see if he can still keep it together. Am I going to feel bad if he loses it? Spoilers. Am I going to feel bad when um, he gets tested horrendously? And I did. I did. So, it just, it, this movie, even though it's made well and I think it's an excellent film, some people might not, might not connect to it. A lot of people might not connect to it and that's something that might bring it down for it. So... But I think my my perspective, my belief, my my, uh, my rating, this film knocked it out of the ballpark, and I give this movie an eight out of ten. But yeah, that's gonna be the review. Uh, if you guys like the review, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, post any comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.